Hey guys, thanks for joining us tonight uh, because we've got the exciting news of a brand new vehicle is born. The fifth generation of this iconic car, Tommy. What is it? Well, it's the Grand Cherokee. The Grand Cherokee, the icon of American SUVs. I thought the Wrangler was that. Well, the Grand Cherokee has been around a long time, well over two decades now, and this is, like you mentioned, the fifth generation, the WL code Grand Cherokee. And in this video, we're gonna tell you what? We're gonna tell you everything, I mean, when I say everything, I mean we have copious notes, <laughs> so sit back and relax and uh, just take it all in because there is a lot to talk about, Tommy, starting with the fact that this is actually 10 years in the making. It's a <laughs> long time since we've had a new Grand Cherokee. So let's do something. I'm going to quiz you here. Okay. What are the five generations of Grand Cherokee? Can you name them? Uh, WK? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're way out of order WR? already. No. So WZ? <laughs> the first one was ZJ. Yeah. Then WJ. Okay. Then WK1. Oh, I stopped showing off. Then WK2. All right. <laughs> and now WL. WL. All right. Well, let's talk about styling, Tommy, because of course uh, that is the first thing you see. So uh, Jeep is promising more refinement and capability. There will be four trim levels at launch the Laredo, the base, of course, Limited, the Overland, and the Summit. And get this there's a Summit Reserve package offers the most luxury. So, what do you think of the styling? I think it's brilliant. Yeah, you like it. I really disliked the Grand Wagoneer concept that they showed a while back. But for this new Grand Cherokee, I think they knocked it out of the park. I think it's much more squared off in the current gen. I like the headlights. I like how they've incorporated the iconic Jeep grille. Just an overall winner. Yeah, it's a fifth generation styling is certainly more evolutionary than revolutionary. And that always happens when you have a vehicle that's very successful because you don't want to upset the apple cart. So the forward tip grille, you notice that? It's tip forward. Yeah, it's like an E30 BMW. Yeah, it's moving away from the older right back look. Mm -hmm. uh, strong resemblance, like you said, to the Jeep Grand Wagoneer concepts. Uh, new LED lights, squared off lower fascia LED lights come standard on all of the Grand Cherokee L models. And what is the L model? Let's talk about that. Well, apparently yep. there's going to be a long wheelbase and a short wheelbase version of this SUV. Think kind of two and three rows. This, the new WL, this one we see here is the long wheelbase version. They haven't quite shown the short wheelbase model yet. And it's worth noting too, I don't believe this is a concept. This is a full debut of a car that you're going to be able to buy soon. So and we'll get to that. We'll get an av availability in a second. Yeah. So let's talk about the side profile. So it's um, much more squared off than the uh, current generation uh, WK Grand Cherokee. In my opinion, I see a little bit of Atlas in the side. If you look at the direct side profile by Volkswagen, still have the uh, big, large wheels, large and in charge here, squared off wheel arches as well. And then I like how the actual belt line is just a straight line. And if you look at the window line, it kind of curves down at the back. It's a very, very handsome SUV. Chrome strip wraps along the top of the doors and then comes back down and wraps around the bottom of the tailgate glass, Tommy. And get this, did you know that there's an American flag badge on each front door along with the Grand Cherokee badge? Yeah, and it's got 18-inch wheels as standard. You can get up to 21s depending on uh, how much you want to spend. It has a wider track and a wider stance than the current model. So around back you have much thinner, kind of more delicate LED taillights and there's a lower load height for a little bit easier, um, you know, loading of your stuff into the trunk. Yeah, but by far, and you have to admit that this is so true, the biggest change, of course, is the interior. They really stepped up their game. I, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. There are a bunch of refined materials and attention to details. Of course, you have the Since 1941 logos in places, LED ambient lighting, you've got wood on the upper trims, you've got this insane steering wheel, which doesn't look like anything I've ever seen on a Jeep, and there's also a new center stack. Yeah, you connect five infotainment system comes standard now. We did a review of that in the new um, um, Pacifica. Pacifica, yeah. Yep. So if you want to see what that's like, check out our Pacifica video uh, and you'll see 8.4 inches is still standard and the 10.1 inches available. What else is new, Tommy? Yes, yeah, so there's a 950 watt 19 speaker audio system. That's the top end uh, system on the Overland and Summit models. Physical buttons for major controls. Yes, I love my buttons. It also has rocker switches for fans and temperatures. It's just an overall much more refined interior than the current one, which is kind of chunky and blocky and usable, but definitely not premium. You can see that Jeep is trying to kind of aim a little bit more up market with this new Grand Cherokee. Now some seats, um, depending on the model, actually have a massage function. Can you believe that? It's uh, getting pretty uh, 
Uh, pretty posh, Tommy. Optional four zone automatic climate control. You have rockers, switches for the different drive modes from auto, sport, snow, sand, mud, and rock. Air suspension is, is an option. And if equipped, you also have buttons for the transfer case on the Quadra Track 2 models with hill descent control, brake hold, uh, that kind of deal. So you can still get this vehicle with the low range. Yeah, and the rotary dial for the eight speed automatic transmission. Now we have taken the uh, uh, current model, or is this the current model now? I guess it's a little confusing, off-road, uh, and it is very capable, you know? It's it's not a Wrangler by any means, uh, but when you compare it to other vehicles that it competes with, like you just said, for instance, the Atlas, uh, it does do really well off-road. It does have that Jeep heritage. So you can get this new Grand Cherokee in both two and four-wheel drive, yep. and then the low range is an option as well. So let's talk about the three-row seating. The L has the extra length to accommodate up to seven passengers with up to 12 USB ports. Wow, that's a lot. Yep, so there's a power folding third row on Overland and Summit models, and then their captain's chairs as an option for the second row if you want a little bit less seating capacity, but a little bit more comfort. You know, this classic vehicle has gotten very competitive. Think of like the Telluride, right? Right. Which is trying to actually kind of interfere with Jeep in the off-road space a little bit. Uh, because off-roading and overlanding is so popular. So I think, uh, you know, Jeep had to really step it up uh, and bring it, you know, A-game to actually compete in the segment that's, I think, gotten super competitive and super popular. So you have uh, tons and tons of cargo capacity, up to 84.6 cubic feet of cargo with the second and third row folded. Uh, and let's kind of dive into technology a little bit because that's where things get super interesting. Would you find, say, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this vehicle? Along with uh, Amazon Alexa. Yep. yep, there you go. Standard blind spot monitoring, always good in a big three-row SUV. You know, we didn't get that on our TRX. We did not, no. I we wish paid we did. more than this. <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> so um, uh, we also have standard collision warning, emergency braking, adaptive cruise, and active lane management. But there's a bunch of new tech. Yeah, let's talk about that. Rear seat monitoring camera on higher trim levels. Once again, we saw that for the first time in the Pacifica. So if you want to see what that looks like, check it out. Uh, there's an optional 10-inch heads-up display, and there's also um, a bunch of new driver assistance technology. There's a level 2 autonomous uh, tech, um, which you can get in the Grand Cherokee. That'll be hands-on-wheel, eyes-on-road driver assist system. And there's also a hands-free version coming later down the road. Night vision camera, which is cool, but I've never actually used in person. And a uh, intersection collision assist and drowsy driver detection. Um, yeah, sensors watch cross-traffic situations and brake when necessary. Use Use the sensors to tell if the driver is falling asleep. A lot of that is becoming um, crucial, uh, and it's really the first step in autonomy, right? So you have to have uh, those features if you actually want to get to autonomous uh, driving. Now, one of the things that's cool about this is, of course, as you guys know, or may maybe don't know, is FCA uh, is merging uh, with Peugeot, and the new company is going to be called Stellantis. And I think a lot of this was developed before the French got involved. Uh, so even though the French are there now, uh, a lot of this is, you know, Mark Allen and his crew uh, putting a very American touch in a very American vehicle. And you can definitely tell that with the power plant. So there still is the option for the 5.7 liter V8. The 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 is standard. It's got 290 horsepower, 257 with the V6, slightly less than the uh, WK2 model, which is interesting, at least horsepower wise. And the uh, V8 is rated at 357, 390, again, slightly less horsepower than the current V8. Towing capacity, 6,200 pounds on the V6, 7,200 pounds on the V8. I'm a little bit disappointed that the launch of the Grand Cherokee has the same engines as the current models. So there's nothing new in the powertrain Were you department. hoping for a hybrid? Well, apparently that's coming. It's yeah. going to be a 4 by e version coming down the road. And available four-wheel drive systems, the base system is called the Quadratrack 1 Single Speed Transfer Case, no low range. That's on Laredo Limited. No hill descent control, no select uh, terrain traction either on the Laredo. But if you step up to the Quadratrack 2, which is standard on Overland and Summit, you uh, can get the low range. You can also get an off-road group on the Overland. Um, and for the most off-road worthy models, they get the electronic limited slipper diff. All right, here's my uh, Roman's rant, all right? Uh, Jeep has, of course, done off-roading since the beginning, right? Uh, and I am deep into Jeeps because we have owned a bunch, we love them, uh, we use them. Uh, but I gotta tell you, Tommy, uh, the names that they use for their different all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive systems are very confusing. So I know there's Quadratech 1, there's Quadratech 2, there's, you know, over the years have been different names for all of it. I don't know the difference between them. Uh, do you? Sure. 
Okay, what's the difference? Well, the difference between QuadraTrack 1 and QuadraTrack 2 is the low range. That's the primary difference. Right. On the older Grand Cherokee, there also was QuadraDrive. Right. Um, QuadraDrive was available with the um, torque vectoring system, basically. On the Wrangler, you have Command Track and Rock Track. Command Track is for all the Wranglers except for Rubicon, which is the Rock Track. I think you're making my point. No, it it's makes sense if you kind of look at it a little bit. I can't remember any of that, dude. I mean, really, you know, I, you know, I, I guess, Mark, if you're listening out there, if, if I were doing this, I'd come up with, like, like you know, not these quadra tracks or drive track or rock track, right? I'd come up with, like, like much simpler names. Like? Like, uh, um, uh, the, let me think, the shark. That's, okay. Or how, or how about the barracuda? You chose two names with animals that have no legs whatsoever. <laughs> you couldn't have chosen an animal with four legs, like four-wheel drive. You chose the, the shark. All right, all right, the goat. That's Ford's thing. The Ram? That's Ram's thing. <laughs> All right, well, you, but it's you not know, so easy, is it there, you Dad? Know, you know what I'm saying? I'd love to have like names that actually you know, inspire something as opposed to just these very inside baseball terms. All right, let's keep going. Air suspension, dude. Five modes offer up to 4.17 inches of lift. So there's normal, a mode, two yeah. off-road settings, a park mode, and an aero mode. There's also a new dual tank design, um, which can lower the whole car at once versus kind of like rocking back and forth. Yeah, that's really cool. I've got a lot of air suspension, especially recently. And when you raise it, it's always like, eh, 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 eh. And when it goes down, it's always like, eh, 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 eh. So it'd be really cool if it just went, eh. You okay. like that sound effect? Up to 10.9 inches of ground clearance, which is slightly higher than the current um, Grand Cherokee. But the standard ground clearance is 8.5, which is somehow slightly less. A little bit less than a Subaru. Yeah, less than a Subaru, you're right, at least most of them. Approach departure and water forwarding. It has worse approach angles than the old Grand Cherokee, which is kind of a shame. 20.6 inches with standard. Yeah, I was looking at the front of that, and it's a little... Uh, it's, it's very it's, low. It's very low. I think fuel economy. So 20.6 degrees uh, standard, down from 26.2. Uh, 30.1 degrees with the air suspension on the Overland, which is just a little bit better than the current air suspension yeah. models. Now, are we I think we're talking about the L here, though. So we're talking about the long wheelbase. Yes, so, that's correct. So the short wheelbase, that'll change. At least breakover should change. Yes. And the breakover, uh, thanks to the longer wheelbase, um, is slightly worse as well. Departure angles are also a little bit lower. But water fording is 24 inches in off-road 2 mode. Four inches over the WK2. What's off road two mode? Off road two is, is, is that the same as uh, as uh, select track no. two? No, off road two. Track two. Off road two is the air suspension height. Okay, that's the. You see what I mean? I think I, I think I'm onto something. Maybe I haven't gotten the right names for this, but no, I think you just got to read the manual, and you'd be uh, you'd be all up to speed. You guys there. read the manual? Who reads the manual? Did if you, you're you spending see, 40, 50 you, grand on a did car, did you see the manual for the TRX? Did you see the? Like, yeah, I read it. No, no, no. That that was the one that was in the glove box. There's one underneath the back seat. I haven't read the main one. I've just read the it's little like one. It's like a Bible. Well, I'll read the big one then. <laughs> all right. All right. So availability. When is this model coming? The 2021 Grand Cherokee L will hit dealers in the second quarter of 2021. The April to June time frame. All right, uh, only these four trims, two engines at launch. So if you're waiting for, you know, the hybrid, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. So no Trailhawk has uh, been confirmed for launch, although the two-row version will debut later this year to replace the current Grand Cherokee, kind of the regular one. How about the Trackhawk? That's probably when we'll see the new Trailhawk. No Trackhawk. 4 by e plug-in hybrid is also coming, and no word on pricing. Oh, yeah, I assume it'll be just a little bit more expensive than the current model. That's usually the way it is, right? Yep, so it will be built at the Jefferson North Assembly Plant in Detroit, and production isn't stopping yet. You can still buy the current Grand Cherokee in the 2021 model year. Yeah, FCA does that. They kind of do, you know, like with the Ram, right? They run the classic, and then they run the new one. Uh, and then when you walk into the dealership, you have a choice of, you know, the one that is relatively affordable and the, or the new one, which is a little bit less affordable. And the new Grand Cherokee L will be built at the new Mack assembly plant in Detroit, which was a $1.6 billion investment. Uh, yeah, that's... Um that's a lot of money, and FCA is saying they're going to hire 40,000 more workers to build the vehicle, uh, which, uh, is that right, 4,000? I thought those plants had like 200 people in them. Oh, no. No? Uh, no, when you're talking the number of people. they're automated. All right, so, so, the Grand so, so before we call this uh, uh, a video, what do you think? Do you like it? I mean, uh, you know, like I said, it has a lot of the uh, um, Grand Wagoneer in it. Yeah, I think it's a little urban, at least the ones they've shown us today. Certainly, we haven't seen the more off-roady ones or the SRT models. So why are they lead with the urban ones? Well, because I think that's the one they sell a lot of. Okay. I think they sell a lot of, like, the the, the Laredos and the Limiteds and that kind of thing. But I, it's a very good-looking vehicle. Much better than the current one. Much better than that kind of bulbousy Grand Wagoneer thing that they showed a while back. It's a big win in style. 
Engines I'm a little disappointed about. Would have loved to see some variety there. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Like a Hemi? No, that, that's what you can get. I'm, I'm variety as in like something... Like a supercharged Hemi? Something with like smaller <laughs> displacement turbos or electrification or something like that. But yeah, we'll... you know, be careful what you wish for. Uh, these engines are proven. Uh, they work. Uh, they, you know, that's, that's Toyota's secret sauce, right? They, they uh, don't necessarily jump on the newest thing, but they go with the proven thing. And when you're looking at a vehicle like this, you want something that's proven and that, you know, is not going to uh, cause issues down the line. Disagree? You'd rather have something... Yeah, I mean, it's a new vehicle. Give me a new engine. I think, I think the engines are a little bit of a... They're fine. Like, they're fine engines. Look, but I think what they did right, certainly, was the uh, exterior and interior styling, and that, at the end of the day, is what really counts. The interior is, uh, like, head and shoulders better than the old one. Uh, you feel like you're in a much more premium vehicle than... We think. Well, until we sit in it. Yeah, we, yeah, we think, yeah. 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 Uh, and, uh, and whether it's good off-road or not, you know, obviously it's got the bones... But once again, until we actually take it uh, wherever they hopefully have a launch, then we'll know more. All right. Well, be sure to stay tuned here to TFL Car and TFLTruck.com for what, Dad? For news, views, and honest and independent reviews. And thank you guys for joining us for this world premiere of the brand new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee um, WK. No, no. WL. Sorry. WL. Sorry, WL. And this is the long one, the L. WLL. All right. What's, you know the ones I know? What? If you, 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 you try to like impress the viewers. I, I, I know the Wranglers. <laughs> okay, name all the Wranglers. Uh, okay, I'll start JK. Uh, nope. the, well, well, JL now, then JK, okay. right? Then TJ. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, the one before before the <laughs> TJ was the uh, YJ. Yep. Uh, and then I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. CJ7, uh, CJ5. Uh, yep. And then before the CJ5, I don't know. CJ3B. Okay. CJ2A. Okay. And then you had the military ones. All right, there you go. There you go. Tommy won that one again. See you guys <laughs> next time. Ciao. Bye.